Just what I need, another vintage crafting project. Hello everybody, I'm Miss Mon Mon. Welcome to my channel. It's been a little while, but I am back after what was supposed to be a two week break, eight months later. Quick thank you to everyone who reached out, messaged, commented and continued supporting me and my work. I was really active on my Instagram and my blog, not so much on my YouTube, but to all those that reach out to make sure I was okay, I love you all. Thank you so much. That actually means the world to me. Moving on to today's video. Today's project started when I was scrolling through the internet looking for a vintage Valentine's Day card for my newlywed husband. We are newlyweds celebrating our first Valentine's Day and have only been married three and a bit months, which is really exciting. And I stumbled upon this image. This is a 1950s Valentine's Day card and I absolutely fell head over heels in love with the girl's dress. It is blue, my favorite color. It had love hearts on it. It had frills on it. She was just super cute. And I thought I am going to make that dress because I don't have enough stuff to do around the house. I'm going to take on this project. So here we are. Right, so here is the plan I made. Got a printout and everything that I thought I could need for this dress. Because she's got these really small spaghetti straps, I think I'm going to use one of my favorite sewing patterns just for the bodice, which is the Butterick 6453. For all my supplies, I ended up going to Textile Homecraft. I bought quite a bit for this pattern, including two and a half meters of blue cotton two meters of white cotton, one meter of red cotton, a whole bunch of interfacing, about 15 meters of red velvet ribbon, and a zipper, new threads, everything that I could possibly need. This project took me about a day and a half to complete. On the first day, I focused on making the bodice using the pattern. I sewed it up. It took me a little while to make sure the princess seams were perfect. And even then I still made a tiny little boo-boo on one of the side seams, so please don't look too closely. I attached the short white lace trim to the top of the bodice, leaving a space for my shoulders to pop out through when I wear them. And then everything was pressed and ironed to be lovely and ready for the skirt to be attached. As much as I would have loved to do a full circle skirt, I ended up deciding on a rectangular skirt, which I cut using panels of the coloured fabric that I needed. I started with a blue panel, which was 17 inches thick and 2.5 and metres wide, and then the white panel, which was 6 inches thick and also 2.5 and metres wide. I then created a heart-shaped template, which I just printed out on the computer, and I used that to cut out 18 love hearts out of the red cotton. Each heart was ironed, had interfacing ironed onto it, and then the interfacing was trimmed. This took quite some time, and I don't know why I did it on the floor, but I did, and I probably should have done it at a table, as my back was killing me by the time we were done. I really wish I had one of those magical Cricut cutting machines, but you know, for now, good old scissors will just have to do. After this, I actually went to bed because I was completely done, and I woke up the next day ready to finish off this dress. On the second day, I started by sewing the white skirt panel to the blue skirt panel and I used an overlocker to clean up the edges. Being really careful to measure out the distance between each heart, I pinned the red hearts along the center of the white panel about 10 centimeters apart. Each heart I then sewed around the edge, trying to make sure that there was as little fraying as possible. I then attached the thick white lace gather trim to the bottom of the white panel. It was now time to add some ribbon trim details. I started with the red and white decorative ribbon, which I sewed around 12 and a half inches from the top of the blue skirt panel, which is about three and a half inches from the bottom. I made sure to keep it as straight as possible and I sewed along the top and bottom of the ribbon. 
Then I pinned and sewed the red velvet ribbon at the bottom and the top of the white panel, making sure to cover the join where the blue skirt met the white panel and where the lace was attached. I sewed along the top and bottom of the ribbon to ensure that it was secured well and looked clean. This took some time, but was absolutely worth it in the final results. Now that the base of my skirt was done, I gathered it using the zigzag dental floss method, which I learned from, I think, a Gertie video, probably, yeah. And then I overlocked it, pinned it, and sewed it to my bodice. Once the skirt was put together, I sewed in my zipper and joined all the back seams. I noticed that there was quite a patch along the white panel right where the back seams met, so I sewed another love heart over that just to make it look more consistent. The last thing I had to do was sew up the bow which is featured right here on the side of the skirt. I cut a piece of white cotton fabric about the same width as the original white panel of six inches. And then I, with a bit of trial and error, just eyeballed how big I wanted the bow to be and sewed the piece into a loop. Along the top and bottom of this loop, I sewed red velvet ribbon. I sewed it on both the inside and the outside of the ribbon so no matter how you looked at it, the tops were lined. I eyeballed how I want my bow to look and then attached two red love heart appliques to the curves of the bow. The bow tails were made out of the remaining white panel fabric and I once again just eyeballed how big I wanted to make it. I hemmed the ends of the bow tails and then I attached the red velvet ribbon once again to the inner and outside portions, sewing along the top and bottom of the ribbon. I then attached two more red hearts to the bow tails on the ends. Finally, I cut a small rectangle to bind the bow curves and the bow tails together and then hand sewed the entire bow together. I hand sewed the bow onto the skirt along the white panel, roughly where I thought it looked right in the picture. And after a final press of the entire dress, she was ready to go. Here she is, my vintage Valentine's Day card inspired dress. I am so thrilled by how this dress turned out. I normally hate half the projects that I make, but this is definitely one that I love. I love how sweet and cute this dress is. It is perfect for a Valentine's Day date. If I were to make this dress again, I would swap out the blue cotton for some pink cotton as I love pink and red as a color combination. It is one of my favorites. Please let me know what you think about this dress and whether you like the idea of sewing a dress from a vintage greeting card. As always, if you would like more information on this project, I have a link to my blog in the description box below that has links and close-up detailed images of everything that I did on this project. So please go and check that out. And that is everything that I have for you today. It is nice to be back on the YouTubes with such a fun project. This is the perfect project to bring me back into the land of filming. I was just dreading coming back, but now with this project, I am actually excited. If you would like to follow me on any of my vintage adventures, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Until then, stay kind, be true, and be you. I love you all. I have missed you guys so much. Thank you to everyone who reached out to make sure I was okay. That meant so much to me. Really, it did. I will see you soon. Bye. Oh, happy Valentine's.